Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Shay Dixon. Shay, we did our Monday mailbag for those who haven't already uh, watched that to check that out. Um, and then the recruiting podcast went up on Tuesday. Uh, plenty of stuff to talk about on that. And here we are on Wednesday morning doing another podcast. We said we'd do one later in the week, but um, after yesterday's Brian Kelly press conference, I called you immediately and said, hey, we might need to to get something up on on this to talk to the people because a lot's changed since we did the Monday mailbag where we talked about, you know, in theory, maybe Zai being out, you know, where they could go and yada, yada, yada. But um, where do we where do we start when well, talking about? Yeah, uh, let's start here. You uh, went and hung out with Kelly after practice yesterday, gave some injury updates. We're going to focus on corner here. This is the big news. Uh, but quickly, Makai Wingo quote unquote, will miss some time. Now, granted, time is relative. Is that this week and some next week and he plays versus Bama because Brian Kelly told us that he was sitting and Makai Wingo is LSU's best D lineman this year, was sitting out the Army game to rest a lower body injury he's been playing through this year. Then all of a sudden it was, oh, he's going to miss some time. And Billy and Buddy at the Bengal Tigers said there's some buzz out there that with him going pro after this year, he's got people in his ear about, hey, don't get too injured. Makai's the type to me who's going to want to play no matter what. So I think it's intriguing and something to watch. It just seems like his injury is more than Brian Kelly led on when it was, oh, he's been playing through an injury and he's just going to take some time off. Yeah, it definitely felt like whenever he said that he was going to miss, you know, the, the Army game, it was more of like, oh, you know, just give him some rest. You know, obviously he missed spring ball and whatnot, but came back and was fine. And uh, we're just trying to rest him because he did. He has played a ton of snaps this year. Like that hasn't changed the way that I think most people thought it would. So it felt like one game rest and then the bye week and then get him ready for Alabama. I mean, obviously, if he's missing more time the injury is more significant than what um, we've been let on about. And like you said, with the NFL potentially coming up, do you want to be 80% or 70% for the rest of the year and 70% going to the combine, 70% going to through testing of the NFL and stuff like that? Um, that is a hard decision that a lot of people have to make. Uh, Brock Bowers will have to make that decision as well um, in this season and how he handles his injury. Like, uh, this is very common. Um, yeah. I, and we'll go ahead. I, well, I do want to interject here and say it is common, but Makai is not the type that's going to quit on the team. No. I mean, he is a team captain, he is their SEC, you know, leadership council representative. He went to media days. He's talked on and on about the move from Missouri to LSU being the best thing that's ever happened to him. This isn't a kid who's trying to just be like, screw it, I'm done type of yeah. guy. Like, if he's not playing, he's injured. Yeah. I I mean, I would guess, yes, again, uh, that he would be back this year. It's just, obviously, if you're injured at this point with the way that it sounds like he's been injured actually over the past few weeks, um, you know, you miss a game maybe try to get back for Florida and AM. I mean, and then potentially obviously a bowl game slash SEC championship game we'll we'll see. But um yeah, I, I don't have a massive problem because he's actually injured. Like he's actually been injured for multiple weeks. And if he continues to play through it, it's going to obviously hinder him throughout the season, but then hinder him in at the next level. So it very much makes sense to me. Quickly here before we move on to the corner, the discussion we're here for. Um if Makai Wingo can't play versus Bama, that has not been said. We'll get an update next week. We'll know more. It could be a little bit of gamesmanship. Who knows? But it would be who? Jordan Jefferson. It would be Jacoby and Guillory. Who gets snaps when Makai Wingo doesn't play? Yeah, I think those two. Jordan Jefferson's the one, though, that everybody should um, expect to see a lot of. And I think he's ready for this. I think this is a big moment for him. Mason Smith obviously has gotten better as the season's gone on. So I do want to yeah. reiterate that this isn't the same situation, you know, as if, you know, Mason Smith is a, is a zero and you just had, had Jordan Jefferson in there. Mason Smith has been playing better. Jordan Jefferson is a very capable player, as we know. 
But Kyle Wingo, I think, like you said, is the best defense lineman on this team. But you're not going from a 10 to a 5. You're going from a 10 to, like, let's say an 8 or something like that. So it is a drop-off, but um, I, I, I feel good about Jordan Jefferson in there. The depth is what is potentially a question mark now. You have Jacoby and Guillory, who we like. But then I think Jalen Lee's played a decent amount, played pretty well. But, you know, we'll have to see. I thought Savion Jones had a great game versus Army, too. When I went back and watched it, he made some good plays, shedding, getting off blocks, making tackles, had his eyes up. So D-line coming along. We'll see what happens with Wingo. Okay, five minutes in. Let's start with while we're here, corners. Matty B, uh, in this – well, right when Brian Kelly got hired, I said it's a multi-year rebuild at corner. And they had to go transfer heavy two years in a row. And you and I sang – this song all off season. And it was people don't realize how good Makai Garner and Jarrett Bernard Converse were for this team a year ago as transfers. They saved them in a major way and they leaned on them the whole way through. Uh, even when they played Jay Ward at corner, Bernard Converse would play some safety. So those guys bailed them out. They take four transfer corners this off season, JK Johnson out of Ohio state, Deuce Chestnut out of Syracuse, Denver Harris out of A&M and Zy Alexander out of Southeastern. What if I told you, and we talked about it over the summer, you said, look, these guys need to be as good, if not better than Garner and Converse, because those guys were very solid. What if I told you then they'll go into Bama and none of the four transfers would play because we are inching closer to that being a reality. Yeah. And I mean, first of all, it would, it would very much lower my expectations of the season going into it, like going into it. If you told me the, cornerback issues I guess that they've had and I I think I said over the offseason was Denver Harris is necessary for this defense to reach its ceiling for this team to therefore reach its ceiling of you know 11 and 1 or what whatever y'all think the ceiling was and obviously that hasn't really panned out the way that people ideally wanted it to and then I was like okay well you have Zy Alexander we said maybe Deuce Chestnut at nickel and stuff like that well LSU has gotten rid of the nickel position, obviously, where Harold Perkins has taken over the slam, Sam slash nickel spot. So you even have an, another spot where you don't have to worry about a cornerback playing there. And so there, therefore, you've been able to bump Sage Ryan to the outside to fill one of the spots, and you still can't field a second corner with experience. And as a result, like you said, the four transfer corners, for one re reason or another, have not worked out. Deuce Chestnut and Denver Harris are on scholarship but are not with the team currently or not practicing right now. And then, obviously, Zai's injury will hold him out a bit. Um, and, and Zai was good when he played, so I do want to reiterate that. I think he was he was a fine player. Um, and he started every single game. Yeah, and started every game. So that it felt like they had figured out, okay, at least we have Sage and we have Zai. Well, yeah. now you have the injury bug, obviously, hitting LSU with Zai going down. I mean – Four transfer DBs all have experience, all basically accomplished at their previous stops. Um, you know, besides J.K. Johnson, who only played one year, but he was a top, what, 50 player out of high school. Denver Harris played half a season, was really good. Deuce Chestnut, all uh, all ACC uh, freshman team. Zy Alexander, obviously, all um, FCS type player. So four guys who haven't worked out for one reason or the other. And I think Zai has worked out, you know, in the big picture. But now when you go into a game as LSU where your season is decided pretty much on Alabama and you don't have the four corners, it's uh, it's not a great situation to be in. Yeah, and let's update. J.K. Johnson got hurt before the season, so he hasn't played at all. He's out for the whole year. He had yeah. surgery, so that's one down. As you noted, Zai injury bug. And it football's football. Guys get injured, but – you know, in hindsight, it's 2020, and it's like, oh, he gets injured at halftime picking the ball off of an Army game that was not even a contest. You know, like he wouldn't even have played in the second half probably. So just terrible timing there on a guy who's gotten more snaps at corner than anyone on the roster. And as you mentioned, Deuce Chestnut and Denver Harris, it's this a little bit more of an update. Brian Kelly said, look, they're on scholarship. They're on the team, but they're not practicing. And it's clear they're in the doghouse for one reason or the next. The reality with Deuce, even when he was like out there and practicing, they weren't playing him after mm -hmm. FSU. I don't know. That led to some 
you know, discontent on his end that then poured into whatever's going on now. Uh, but Denver didn't play in the last game. Um, so or maybe last two games. So there's obviously been something going on there. Brian Kelly said he'll revisit it. We'll see what happens. But let's move forward right now with the discussion, Matty B, of what does happen if you do not have, because they will not have J.K. Johnson, and it's very likely they do not have Zion Alexander. So Deuce and Denver are your suspended in trouble guys, however you want to say it. They could be back. But running down the snap count on the year, Zai leads the way with 418 snaps this season. He probably won't play. Sage has had the second most corner snaps, 334. The drop off to the next, Denver's 217. So Sage and Zai have dominated the corner reps. And Sage is available. So you'll have Sage. Denver, like we said, 217 snaps. That's the unknown. We'll see if he plays. Deuce Chestnut, 81 snaps, an unknown. We'll see if he plays. Even then, more than half those snaps probably came against Florida State. So, yeah. in fact, a large majority has barely played since. That leaves you with four guys. One of them, only one of them is not a true freshman, Lieutenant Welsh. Uh, he's a, so- a redshirt or a sophomore. Yeah, he played on special teams yeah, last sophomore. year. He was their only returning scholarship corner. That's why they took so many transfers. He's got 72 uh, snaps on the year. Ashton Stamps, we should note, is healthy now, Brian Kelly said. He's missed two games in a row because he wasn't healthy. That's huge. He's had 57 snaps. In fact, he got a start, too, at Ole Miss. Jeremiah Hughes, their only cornerback signee, because Ashton Stamps was a safety that they moved down to corner. Jeremiah Hughes has 37 snaps. Ryan Robinson Jr., preferred walk-on, has 16 snaps, 1-6. And then Toviano has, what did you send me? But it's all going to be at safety. Um, 47. 47 total snaps. That would put him right below Ashton Stamps. But again, his his snaps have come at safety. But he's versatile. We saw him in camp at corner. But Kelly mentioned those guys. So LaTerrence Welsh, Ashton Stamps, Jeremiah Hughes will join Sage Ryan. Um, Toss Ryan Robinson in there. Toviano is another guy he mentioned. Your prediction here, if four transfers are out, Sage is starting, who starts next to Sage? I, I want to say Ashton Stamps um, because I do think they trust him the most. Early in the season, he was like the next man up for a lot of it. However, I don't know his full health status. Like He's available. It sounds like he's good to go, but is he 100%? Is he you know looking as sharp as he usually is? I, I do think that is a question worth, you know, pondering. And there, then it would put Terrence Welsh in in that spot. So, um, if I it's had to either guess, Stamps or Welsh, yeah, it's either it's either Stamps or Welsh. Which, you know, in theory, it's not the worst position to be be in, right? It's I do think the drop from Zai to those two is something. I I think it is worth noting. I think it is substantial. But Stamps and Welsh have both, like you said, they started a game against Ole Miss, not saying that they played great in that game or anything, but um, they at least have some experience there. And I think they showed some stuff in fall camp that makes you say, okay, well, if we can game plan around them, if we can put them in non-compromising situations, then – there's a chance they could have some success. Still, it's obviously a, a not a great situation to be in, but I would go Ashton Stamps as, as my pick. I'll also point out that, uh, and I'm not diehard PFF, you know, uh, that everything that they say matters, but yeah. um, Sage Ryan, of the 334 snaps, uh, nearly 200 have come in coverage. He is their highest rated coverage corner on the team, almost at 70 uh, on their uh, grading scale. So. Sage, you feel good about. I know that people have their qualms, and he's played safety, he's played nickel. You're taking him at corner right now. Uh, and hey, look, Sage was committed. He did the, that whole Bam LSU thing before he committed. This is an important game for him. Certainly, he knows the value of it, what it means. He's a vet. I'm fine with him out there. After that, Welsh has had 33 coverage snaps. Denver Hare, uh, excuse me, um, Jeremiah Hughes has had eight. Ashton Stamps has had 33. So Welsh and Stamps have had 33 snaps in coverage, same amount. Uh, Welsh graded out a little bit higher, but I don't really care too much about that. It's yeah. They're both below 65. So 
Uh, 41 for Deuce Chestnut, like I said, coverage snaps. He hasn't played anyways. I think the wild card here for me, Matt E.B., is Denver Harris because he's got the third most reps of any corner. He's got the third most reps in coverage snaps, uh, 124 um, this season. That's experience. And he played last year for half a season at A&M. So whatever doghouse he's in, how does he get out of it? Like uh, You don't have the answer, but he's got to get out of it before they go to Bama because – that gives you at least the ability not to have to rely on guys who've just not played much this year, let alone a bunch of them are freshmen. I, I have a question, and I, it's not just for you. It's for, I guess, everybody is, let's say Denver Harris hasn't practiced in a couple weeks, or at least, you know, it's just oh, last week and this week. This week he is not practicing at this moment, Brian Kelly said. Um, let's say he shows up, or not even shows up, but let's say they, they get – him out the doghouse on Tuesday of next week and he hasn't practiced in two to three weeks. You're just, well, are we, are we good just putting him out there and hoping for the best? Because that, they, that might be honestly, like you said, the best option. Like if even no matter what happens, if Denver Harris is available, you put him on the field and hope that he can be physical enough because Alabama's receivers are not great. We talked about that at length. They're not great receivers. So physically, he could probably hold up, maybe throw some man in there, like give you some flexibility. Not saying he has to play all 70 snaps, but, you know, maybe give you some flexibility there. I don't, I'm just, it's such a precarious position to be in where we don't know, like Denver Harris hasn't been with like practicing recently. So it is. A troublesome spot. I mean, Stamps obviously has been hurt a couple weeks, so has he even been practicing? Like, um, honestly, the safest pick might be Laterrence Wells, just because at least he's been healthy and practicing. But when you go again into a game against Alabama, I just it's yeah. a lot of and question marks. I'm not trying to discredit at all Bama's receivers. I think what we're seeing right now from LSU is so special because Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors are both going to go over a thousand yeah. yards. They're incredible. They lead the nation in all those stat categories. But you pointed out LSU is nearing 350 passing yards a game. And in half, you know, three or four, three games, they've just taken their foot off the gas and run it the second half uh, of these non con games. And Mississippi State was kind of similar. They were beating them pretty soundly. Uh, but Bama barely cracks the top 10 in passing offense in the SEC. Uh, they throw for a little more than 200 a game. And Jermaine Burton is Jermaine Burton. He's a beast, but he's got 500 yards in the year, five touchdowns, but 500 yards. So he averages about 60 yards a game. They don't have anyone else on their team right now who averages more than 45 yards a game. Uh, Isaiah Bond <clears throat> would be their number two receiver, um, but he averages 45 yards a game. Nye Black's a tight end, so that won't come into this conversation of corners. Um, Kobe Prentice would be their third guy, I guess you would say. Uh, he had scored, but how's he, how has Malik Benson done for them this year? I that, even... what I was getting to is that you've got a guy like Kobe Prentice catching eleven for one eighty six and one. That's twenty three yards a game. Malik Benson, who was a five star transfer guy, who was everybody wanted him. LSU wanted him. Yeah. He was heavy on Malik Benson. He's played in every game, but he's caught eight passes for ninety one yards. Mm -hmm. That's ten yards a game. He has not scored a touchdown this year. To my knowledge, no. Um, and then they've got some freshmen. Jalen Hales on the team. He's gotten into some games, and but it's only got three catches. This isn't a team like – they're not going up against LSU where they've got like dudes who are just like, all right, y'all have no shot. These guys yeah. average like 120 yards a game each. But they are still talented. And in comparison to LSU, especially if they're down on guys at corner, the advantage probably still goes to Bama. I mean – Again, as much as like as I, I think LSU fans are are right to point out Alabama's flaws on offense, and this is an Alabama preview podcast, but this is what this is what the seasons come down to. Basically, this is pretty much your season in a nutshell. And I, I want to reiterate: it's like we watched Ole Miss kind of without great receivers. Obviously, Trey Harris is fine, is good, but uh, Zachary Franklin had just come back from injury. Like they. Ole Miss was a shell of itself going into that LSU game on offense. And Ole Miss was able to move the ball consistently. So that's where my concerns are with it feels like Milrose getting more comfortable. The receivers are, are at least showing some flashes here. 
that's why the cornerback position is so important. And you don't have the experience of Zion Alexander who has been reliable for you. And you don't even know what you have coming up the pipe. So um, it is a fascinating spot to be in. Um, I really don't have anything else here, uh, but I, I do think I, I talked to you on the phone yesterday. It was like, it will be interesting big picture moving forward, how much, they look at the transfer portal for corners compared to the freshmen just taking a lot of freshmen and trying to develop them for the long term. That's going to be a really interesting um, balance. Ashton Sams was one of the lowest ranked kids on their commitment list coming out of Rummel, but he was in my top 10 favorite players. Nearing top five, I just thought he had tremendous upside. Ashton Sams legacy game incoming. Yeah. LaTerrence Welsh legacy game incoming. Like, this is the time. These guys know that they're going to get thrown out there at some point. So let's see how they hold up. Yeah, I, I do think, again, going going back to it, I mean, if you tell me you know, next year Sage is back, Ashton's back, and LaTerrence is back as those three, and then obviously, you know, Zai should be back. Like, they have enough here returning. J.K. Johnson should be back. You know, who, who knows who moves on or whatever. But in theory – Denver? Is Denver, Denver, Denver be back? <laughs> Denver could, could be back. Like, all these guys – could be back. They could have the entire quarterback room back. Um, I'd be surprised if we saw LSU take another corner this year. And honestly, with how many corners they're taking in the 24 class, potentially, I mean, they they could have an, they could be set at corner to where they don't need to be in this situation moving forward. They obviously injuries will be injuries, you know, players, maybe, you know, whatever come and come and go, but they should be set for the next two years. I'll say, to where and probably beyond where they don't need to take that risk of a, you know, Denver Harris or even J.K. Johnson, Zay Alexander, Brian Kelly said throughout the offseason, it's a red flag when you take this many transfers. And he specifically said, we don't know how good these corners are going to be. And honestly, even when they have been on the field, they haven't been great. They haven't been as good as they were last year. And I'd be surprised with the way that they've been bitten this year from the transfer portal, especially at corner, that if they're looking to, you know, just go get anybody, just go get um, a Zy Alexander from from FCS ranks. Like it would have to be, in my opinion, probably a Denver Harris, but without obviously the Denver Harris question marks that came with it, him. It would have to be an all like all conference player they're not going to lean heavy on the portal again because it's proven fruitless for them yeah. this season beyond zai and we talked about this off air we can wrap up with this they've had they have five high school corners committed you got guys like toviano who can play both you got guys like stamps and jeremiah hughes and welsh in the program take high school guys and develop them take your lumps it is what it is i understand having to take they had to because they didn't have enough corners on the roster to even get through the year but you're nearing where you're going to be in a better roster shape. I'm I'm over this transfer experiment at corner. It doesn't work right now. Like I'd much rather see look up and I understand that look, they won the West. This team is uber talented. We see that if they could even play defense in half these games, they'd be undefeated and in the title race and Jaden could win a Heisman, all that. But if at this point Ashton and Welsh and those guys had started eight games they're suddenly a lot more comfortable and they, you know, you feel better about them and you feel better about the future and you're developing them. But those guys are just having to sit behind transfers and Zai has been very good, but the other three have not paid off at all for him. Like JK got hurt. So he doesn't even count and Deuce and Denver can't stay on the team right now. Like they can't even stay available for practice without getting in trouble. Yeah. I mean, and then obviously, um, Andre Sam, I think has gotten better as the year's gone on. He had a rough start. Yes. So we'll see, but it's like, well, everyone then, at safety is a transfer. Major Burns transferred for, he's a Baton Rouge native. He transferred yeah. from Georgia. Like, yeah, it's, Greg um, Brooks transferred from Arkansas. Andre Sam transferred from, um, uh, Marshall. Um, yeah. I guess he spent a brief second at Tulane, but Marshall. And you have now what? Three freshman classes, two full classes after going into next year to where you won't, again, you should have enough built up depth here to where you shouldn't have to take multiple transfers in the secondary. If you want to take one safety here, okay, cool, maybe. Um, but it's very, very much, I think it's evident across like all of college football. If you look at specific teams, 
I mean, defensive line, I think, actually works out fairly well because it's kind of predictable of what you're getting. Jordan Jefferson, Paris Shan, Brayden Swinton, Ovia Gofu. Like, all right, you knew what you were getting there. And then the farther you go away from the ball, and I think this is on offense too, the farther you go away from the ball, it's harder to kind of predict how these guys are going to translate to the next level because the speed and the size of yep. SEC guys are just so different. So um, I, I, I agree with you. I would just – you take these four or five, you know, however many 2024s they're going to take, you add it to a, a quarterback class that, like we said, could a quarterback uh, room that could return Zai, Denver, you know, everybody here. So, okay, cool. They come back and you just let it play out from there. The next two years, I, I'd be surprised if they took a corner uh, transfer um, specifically. So, yeah, unless some Louisiana native pops up that's too good to turn down, you know, or like someone who's too good to turn down. But I'm not for, and this is not a knock directly on Deuce Chestnut, Chestnut at all. You don't need to go take a Syracuse kid who's from New Jersey to come down here and save your corner room. Like you've got guys in Louisiana, you've got guys in East Texas, you've got guys in South Mississippi, and they have proven hit rates. Like New Jersey is not churning out corners. So it for me, stick here, take high school kids, evaluate correctly, develop them. That's what Brian Kelly wants to do. He's just not in a position to do it this year. Exactly. I think moving forward, you have to be in that position and stick with it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I honestly don't have a problem with them taking the four corners they had to this year. Like, no, they, they had were, to. Yeah. So it just does didn't work out, and I think this uh it'll be a lesson for them moving forward. All right. Anything else, Jay? Well, no. We said we do like ten or fifteen minutes. We did thirty. So it is what it is. It's hey, it's a bye it. week, man. Nobody's doing anything. Just turn on our podcast go. and. And chill. Go, um, go. But again, none of it. We'll see what happens with Deuce Chestnut and Denver. We do not expect Zai to play. Um, JK is not playing, obviously. So up in the air on Deuce and Denver's availability. Um, Denver way more important to me than Deuce. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, that's it. Also, I did get a notification that Emory Jones is practicing um, at, at right tackle. Um, we, we He talked about, Brian Kelly talked about him a little bit yesterday but emory jones is expected to be back for alabama so that's good news um on that front and yeah i think that does it for all the updates uh we'll be back at some point in the near future maybe um over the weekend or maybe on monday so yeah oh, enjoy your, yeah probably just monday mailbag but um enjoy y'all's weekend uh college football nfl i know nba is back i got my spurs shirt on here oh yeah there you went women yana women yana women yama time um and yeah thank you all for joining us we'll talk to you later